Hey y'all, Wackworm here with another Door Fortress tutorial. This time we're going to talk about some of the GUI elements and moving about our world and how we do that. The first thing I like to do when I come into a new Door Fortress world is I like to get rid of this map over here. It just kind of soaks up some screen space and it's not incredibly useful except for maybe a quick reference. So I'm going to hit the tab key and we know that because we can reference this menu up here and see that the tab key is going to move this menu slash map. So I'm going to hit the tab key once. The map goes away, I'm going to hit it again, that kind of slides over and fills that space and we get a little more screen time with the rest of our world here. Now let's talk about some of the other elements of this GUI that's going to convey information to us. We already kind of mentioned our hotkey list here. This is our menu that's going to allow us to actually do things in our world, to get information out of the world, to do actions within our world, to designate things and so on. It's also going to allow us to pause or resume the game with the spacebar or to move one step in the game with the period key. This may be different. I've noticed this is different depending on your Door Fortress version, but most of this stuff stays the same from version to version. Now, if we go in the top left-hand corner, we'll see that our game is paused because of the word pause there. That will go away once we unpause it, so that can be a quick reference. You can also see that by what word is beside the space key in this menu here. If it says resume, then pressing the space bar will resume the game. If it says pause, pressing the spacebar will pause the game. We have some information above this menu. We have the end game date, which is pretty cool. I don't know how useful it actually is, but it's nice to see it up there. Right beside it is something that is incredibly useful. This is telling us how many dwarves we have in our fortress that currently have no jobs assigned to them, are not capable of working any of the existing jobs, the jobs they can work. There have been no orders to do those jobs. So this is a very important indication of when you either need to assign new jobs or you need to tell dwarves that they're allowed to do jobs they weren't previously allowed to do. We'll definitely get into that more as we move on through our tutorials. It's not for today though. Finally, we have this little bit of information down here. We have the H key followed by some numbers in different colors. This is our happiness meter. And as we move over to the right, we're talking about higher and higher happiness levels. We see that on any new embark, you should have all dwarves in these first two tiers of happiness. Happiness is very important. It's a number we want to keep high for our dwarves because we don't want them to fall into very sad moods where they're refusing to work and they're just kind of moping around. Or even worse, they may become suicidal. So that's definitely a number as we move throughout our game. We're interested in producing goods and becoming a rich and powerful fortress, but we're also interested in providing certain privileges and amenities to our doors that's going to keep them happy. So as we move throughout our tutorials, we're definitely going to keep those numbers in mind there. Now, let's talk about moving throughout our world. First, we have the arrow keys, which if we're not in any sort of menu or action that has a cursor that we're moving around, just a single press of an arrow key is going to move you like four or five tiles, maybe a couple more than that. So that's a relatively fast way of moving about the screen is just using the arrow keys. Now, whether you have a cursor or not, you can hold the shift key, press the arrow keys, and that's going to move you sort of like a bulk move. It's 11 tiles, I believe, that this is going to move you in one key press. So this is going to move you much faster around the screen. We can also move up and down throughout the Z levels of our fortress. So if I hold the shift key and I press the period key, which is actually the greater than symbol, that's going to move us down one level into our world. Most of this is hidden from us because it's below ground. We're not sure what's there, but water and roots are sort of transparent and we can see what blocks are adjacent to those. So we can look around and see that our water is touching a soil wall and our roots are touching a soil wall and we can see all that. Everything else here is hidden and we don't really know what's happening there. We can go up levels with the shift comma key or the less than sign. So we move back up one, we're on our initial level here, move up again, we can start to see some of the leaves and the branches of the trees that are in our world. And if you kind of focus on the ground here, you're going to notice as I continue to move up, this ground is going to take on more and more of a blue tint until it's completely blue and we can no longer see any details. And that's sort of a sign of how high you are above the ground. A more quantitative sign of how high you are above the ground is your Z level noted down here in this bottom right hand corner you see it's it's vertically spelled out 106 so we're at the 106 z level uh, currently in this game it's going to be different for you because your initial embark is going to be on a different z level and all that good stuff but this is a good note here 
of where exactly you're at. And if we shift through going back down, we can see that number decreasing and we can continue to go way, way, way down. So we moved down pretty far. We're pretty far away from our wagon. I want to get back there, but I don't want to have to press that key over and over and over again. It'd be really nice if I could get back there really quickly. Well, lucky for us, if we check our menu here, Door Fortress has hot keys. Now these keys are specifically tied to moving you to a certain view. It comes by default with the F1 key assigned to your wagon. So if I press F1 here, it's going to zoom me back up here to my wagon, center me up on there, and it saves me the effort of having to find it manually and all that. It's a good key for newbies if they get lost. It's a good key in general just for moving about the world quickly and not having to manually move around to find, okay, well, my dining hall is over here, my forge is over here, blah, blah, blah. You can assign additional hotkeys here. We can press Shift H to manually assign some new hotkeys. On the left hand side, we have the name, so we can rename it uh, however we wish. The first one starts with the gate. For some reason, it calls our wagon the gate. In the middle here, we have whether it's actually been assigned to a view or not. It'll say zoom if it's been assigned to a particular view. And then on the far right hand side, we'll see what key it's assigned to. So this is not configurable. It comes by default assigned to different F keys. So if I wanted to assign a new hotkey view up here, I'm going to hit the key on the right hand side to go ahead and select that. So I'll hit F2. That's going to select this key right here. I can hit N and we can name this to like top. We'll press the enter key to finish naming it. And then we can press the Z key to say we want to zoom here whenever we press that key. Now if we escape back to our main menu here, we can press F1 to go to the wagon. F2 is going to take us back up to the top of our screen. And that's going to wrap up how we move throughout the world and the information we get from our GUI and all that. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, please subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any feedback, suggestions, you have questions for me, anything like that, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comment section below and I will see y'all in the next tutorial.